So this quickie is about uh, DBs in the cloud, more precisely our uh, relation to database in the cloud. It's a work in progress. It's one of my side projects I started like probably six months ago. And uh, obviously, as every type project, it takes a little bit of time. Uh, it's basically how I was able to play with uh, relational databases and how I was able to optimize uh, my, uh, my different projects thanks to uh, containers. Because with containers, like everybody knows, you can really uh, start, up con start up database very easily uh, without any problems. Um, so I used to, I'm very used to containerize everything. Uh, all my services are containers. I've been using Docker for quite a long time now. I would say something like four years. Uh, I'm heavily using Swarm, Kubernetes, and also Cloud Foundry, actually. And uh, basically, I pretend I can get uh, all what I developed at least. Uh, everything running, high availability, with uh, any cloud provider uh, within minutes. That's pretty much uh, what allows uh, containers and uh, Kubernetes, Swarm, and PCF. But I realize it's not really completely true because databases are not there yet. They have, it's very difficult today to actually uh, get rid of this part that is today hosted in the cloud provider, like for example, uh, Aurora for AWS, or um, and, uh, Google Cloud also gives you access to uh, MySQL hosted. They take care of it, they take care of the high availability. And so I wanted to know, can I go beyond what I'm doing today, and can I actually try to implement these databases uh, within containers? What will be the performance? And uh, that's, where, that's where it all started. So I'm, I was trying to, or I'm still trying to answer these four questions. Is it easy to, uh, to cluster a containerized relational database? Uh, there's a database that came up recently, which is called CockroachDB, which was uh, v1.0, uh, I think, uh, last month, if I'm not wrong. Has anybody heard of CockroachDB before? One, two, three. So basically, it's a cloud-native uh, database, relational database, ACID compliance, that is uh, horizontally scalable, and that is uh, really easy to manage in the cloud. On top of that, it's uh, made in Golang, and I love Golang. So I thought, uh, how does it compare to what I'm using usually, which is uh, MySQL? Uh, then I wonder which, which one of the relational databases should I use for my, again, my usual work. So when I say my usual work, uh, it means most of the time, Golang as a, as a language, uh, and MySQL most, most of the time. And uh, relational databases uh, are used for very normal use case, nothing fancy. So most of the time, we can take the example, and I will take the example in this uh, in this benchmark, uh, is one entity and an entity that is updated, created, updated, like a basic CRUD. And we want to keep the history of the, of the entity uh, within its lifetime. And the last question is, can I beat the uh, hosted Google, Google database uh, price performance? So they are sponsors, so maybe I should not uh, <laughs> answer that question. Uh, so. I decided to create uh, an automated setup to do all this, uh, to do all these tests and benchmarks, actually, to see uh, what was the best price performance I could get with uh, Golang and uh, RDBMS. Uh, so I started with Google Cloud, their sponsor again. Uh, Golang 1.83. Uh, I used a simple uh, VM with uh, one CPU, four gigs of RAM. And that is about $30 per month. I use uh, oh yeah, one, 1 million requests uh, with 50 concurrent Go routines. When I say 1 million requests, it means uh, 1 million requests for creation, 1 million requests for updates, and 1 million requests for selects as well. 
it doesn't mean that there's only one query uh, when I do a create, for example. So it gives you uh, an idea of how many, uh, how many requests you have per second. And the last thing I wanted to do is uh, pluggable schemas and pluggable databases. So pluggable schemas, I wanted to have the setup uh, reproducible. And if I want to test, for example, a new uh, schema I've been thinking about, I would just have to create a folder and uh, do the schema in, in the different SQLs and launch my bench automatically in the cloud so that I don't have to touch anything. And pluggable DBs, I can also choose which database I'm, uh, I'm uh, benchmarking against uh, automatically. Automated, that's the last thing. So what I tested is uh, MySQL, of course, which was uh, MySQL 801. And I decided to include as well, uh, because they are available, uh, uh, Percona and MyADB, which, has, which are uh, MySQL binary compatible. Uh, Percona was 5.7, and MyADB was 10.3. Uh, it's not really equivalent in terms of version, but it's, it's OK. CockroachDB, of course, because that was the goal of it. And then I, while, while I was uh, looking into Docker Hub, I realized that, well, there is a lot of other DBs that I can also uh, try at the same time. And I went crazy on that. So still uh, relational databases. So Postgres, because I never tried it, but it's like it has quite a lot of hype recently, and it's open source. Oracle, because uh, I think a guy, an organizer actually of Vox Days told me, yeah, you should do Oracle. Thank, thank him. It's not very nice. It was very, very, very painful. Uh, SQL Server from Microsoft just uh, was available for Linux, so I decided to include it. They also have an official Docker Hub uh, repo. SQLite, because it's a good reference, after all. And of course, uh, hosted MySQL on uh, Google Cloud, and they just also released in beta uh, hosted Postgres on Google Cloud. And because it was not enough, and it was not complicated enough, uh, I decided to also uh, do it automated on Swarm or Kubernetes, because I, I like both, and I wanted to know if one is really worse than the other. I remind you that it's uh, still a work in progress, so I didn't have time to compare everything. And these bench take actually quite some time. So I'm going to show you what I actually uh, tested. So that's the DB schemas I took were probably not the best ones, but they are just, uh, I started with something so that I, I could uh, really uh, go for it and, and test the results. And that was the first one I took. So as I said, very simple. One entity and its status, uh, and we keep the history of the, of the status. There are constraints and indexes, probably uh, the best I could do. And there is a second one that I did, which is a bit more complex, probably even more stupid. But I wanted really to compare the, to see if my DB, uh, my schemas were really easily pluggable, and I can just uh, play with it like I want, add the new one, and remove a new one. And so, uh, Golang is great because it allows you to actually uh, do testing, of course, natively, and also benchmarks natively. So. Uh, so my test here and benchmark were run on uh, my local machine, so Core i7-550U uh, and 16 gigas of RAM. And it already uh, can show you uh, what will be uh, obvious later. Um, I won't go through all the details, but basically you can see that Cockroach uh, is around 500 in an insert and update, whereas all the others are around 2,000, or even 3,000 sometimes. We can see also uh, quite quickly that they are pretty much all in the same range. There's no like uh, exceptional uh, outlaw, except maybe uh, SQLite, but it's not the same because it's local. It doesn't go through the network when it talks to uh, to the Golang. So that was so the benchmark Golang are run in parallel, but for each test, it's run sequentially. So it doesn't take into account like the different locks that can happen when you update or insert in the same table. So the next step was to actually uh, create live benchmark on Kubernetes on Google Cloud or Docker Swarm, which was on my local machine, for uh, the two different schemas I, I showed you. 
so the, this one and the other one, and see uh, the result in terms of throughput, average time, and uh, number of errors, and stuff like that. So I will just go through the, yeah, I just go through the throughput to see uh, the main results. So you can see everybody is quite on par. Uh, so that's Docker Swarm. So I will show, sorry, the Kubernetes one so that we can include also uh, GCP. I don't, I don't know if you see it well. Maybe zoom. Maybe it's better like this. Um, so there's all the DBMS for this schema. So insert, I mean create, sorry. So which is uh, here, create as uh, one insert, two inserts, and uh, that's it. The update does uh, one insert and one update, and selects uh, by status and by primary key. So as you can see, obviously, uh, SQLite is uh, way before for select. All the rest are pretty much uh, similar, around uh, 800 and 1K for the inserts and updates, update a little less. And for the selects, around 4, 5K. And you can see still the outliers. OK, Oracle, I won't talk about that. Uh, <laughs> no need, I think. And CockroachDB was actually quite bad. So that was the results. So now let's go back to the first question I had at the beginning. Before it's too late, I think you were running short. Uh, so, is it easy to cluster a containerized database? Uh, I started, I wanted to do that for this talk, and I wanted to have a cluster of, let's say, a Galera cluster for MySQL or uh, even a Cockroach, but I realized that uh, really it's today not there. It's, uh, it requires a lot, a lot of complexity, of uh, multiple steps to actually set up your cluster. So, I decided to say, no, it's not easy. <laughs> And I stop there. Maybe in the future it will grow. Probably Cockroach will grow uh, a lot easier. Is Cockroach uh, DB ready from prime time? Unfortunately, no. Uh, the good thing is that thanks to this bench, and uh, I actually uh, uh, reported to them, and they are working on it. So they are probably going to either reply to me saying what I did is completely shit, or uh, optimize it according to what I've benched. So hopefully, very soon, I can use CockroachDB instead of everything I'm use, I've been using before. Uh, which are DBMS? We could see that uh, they are pretty much all the same. Uh, the, I, I would, have, would have hoped that there, there were some that were a lot better than the others. But that said, uh, these are all default configs. And I'm sure that you can tune everything so that uh, you can actually make things a lot faster for Oracle, for example, and uh, SQL Server as well, and MySQL, and et cetera. Can I beat hosted Google DBs for the same price performance? They are sponsors, so no. <laughs> but I think it's about the same price. It's uh, for $24, uh, you can have a hosted database uh, with the same N1 standard machine, so which is uh, one vCPU and uh, four gigs of RAM. Uh, so as I said, it's a work in progress. So in the future, I hope I can have increased stability and uh, maybe an easier way to do bench because it takes a lot of time to do this bench. It takes uh, around uh, six hours. So when something is not right, it's like the end of it. Uh, more benchmarks, of course. Maybe uh, better schemas, better chosen schemas. As I said, cluster DBs. And uh, also probably see the... Uh, the influence of uh, storage drivers for Kubernetes and Swarm, and as well as uh, physical storage, as SSD will have better uh, uh, improvements over standard, uh, standard disk. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> 15 minutes is quite short, so uh, do you have any questions? Did you understand everything? Anything? <laughs> Yes? For a long time, it was not just hard, but uh, uh, not advised to have errors in the container because the storage drivers are yep. not there. Is that solved now? 
Uh, it's starting to be sold with uh, stateful sets for Kubernetes and uh, Swarm also as a uh, drivers. So that if, you, for example, you have a, your database in your cluster and it fails, then the underlying storage will stay there and your container will restart on any machine on the cluster and the, the file system will be remounted at the same place. So it's uh, resilient, but it's not highly available. Because, of course, when your database goes down, you don't have any spare, uh, spare system. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a. Uh, I don't remember where Cockroach did the compromise, uh, but it's pretty. Uh, it's it's pretty nice. It's like uh, it would really be if it works like as uh, advertised. It would really be something uh, so easy to use and uh, a breakthrough for for the whole uh, cloud industry. I would say, even though it sounds a bit. Too much better. For this one, I decided to make it on par with the other ones, so it was a single entity. But the problem is that, so I, I would think uh, that you can scale with multiple nodes, which uh, that what they advertise. But the problem is that uh, not only it was slow, but like one times out of three, it would be uh, locking completely and stopping accepting a uh, request. So this is not possible. Because uh, if it's slow, it's OK. You just add node and more machines. But if it doesn't reply, it's like there's a big problem. OK. I think that's it then. <laughs>